So I'm just reading over Mike's um, ECG, right? So that's the... Echocardiogram. Yep, that's... That's the wires they basically place right next to your heart to basically monitor it. Yeah. Doesn't look good. I mean, I can't read the lines this, themselves because I'm not trained to do so, but possible inferior myocardial infraction, probably old. Borderline ECG, unconfirmed report, AKA, your heart's really unhealthy, Mike. What yeah. the hell? Mm. 76 BPM, I guess that's the resting heart rate. Yep. It should be a bit lower, isn't it? It should be about 60 for you. Yeah, but you know, you know, when I was a when I was a fit lad, I got it down to fifty nine. Nice. You need to get it down to that again. You know? <laughs> I mean, my heart should be around about seventy six. My heart should be around about that, not yours, because well, you know, I'm way more energetic and a bit crazier. Yeah, just a tad crazier. Yep. <laughs> as well as younger. Yeah, a little bit by decade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look good, Mike. So, what was the heart thingy for? Um, the, the heart thingy... Yes? ...was for the psychiatric assessment. Okay, um, before we begin, this is the As You Understand podcast with your conflicting host, Mike and Sophie, mainly because I have no idea why people need to check your heart to actually make sure your head is alright. Um, it's a side effect of... The possible change in medication that I sent to you yesterday. So they have to make sure that your heart is healthy enough for the medication change? Oh, a lot of things. Oh, wow. A lot what, of things. What else? Um, I've got to go for bloods after this. Oh, yes. Um, check all of the physical functions. Um, that there, there is no abnormalities in there. Okay. Because... For instance, I could be in a low mood constantly because I might have a thyroid issue. All right. So, you know, have it to have to do that today as well. Could literally be a physical thing. It could be a we, physical thing. When is your blood test? It'd be when I get back. From. From the podcast. What time exactly? There's no no set time. Oh. <coughs> we're literally are here for podcasting and lunch. Yeah. I mean, we're literally here on location, actually. I forgot to say, um, Mike's over at my place right at this moment. Yes. Oh, I was actually expecting new um, depression medication. No, it's just teardrops. Yeah. Yeah. So the medication you're going to be going on, uh, what's it called and how does it work? Also, what are the side effects? Uh, well, it's called... Um, Eflex or XR. There, yes. there, there, there are two possibilities depending on the results. Oh, sorry, Mike. There is that. Um, it is a um, SSRI inhibitor. Yeah. Which is also known a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Which means you have more serotonin in your system. Well, that's what the drugs are supposed to do. Yes. Um, and supposed to recycle it more. I see. So, like, they've like they've opened, they've increased serotonin, and they've left the gap open, for, so it can circle around more. So it's like a very mild version of methamphetamine. Yeah. Oh, very mild. But like, take for instance, instead, the best way I can rephrase this in, in a way that people would understand would be a think of serotonin as a Lithium ion rechargeable battery. Oh, yes. Right? Right. Like, instead of one input port to recharge it, it has two. Oh. That's the best way I can describe it. So it increases your number of serotonin that can be used at any given time. Yeah. Okay. Does that make better sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something else that can make you happier. Um... You also have roses for Valentine's Day. Yes, because... Yellow, yellow roses. Because... Yeah. We are filming this the day before Single Awareness Day. Yes. <laughs> it's also Chinese New Year on Thursday, which is another Single Awareness Day, because you're supposed to be taking home a, a partner for New Year's. <laughs> but, yes. you know. But, considering that I know my symbolism mm? pretty well. Yes. What... What do yellow roses symbolise? Friendship. Yes. Yes. 
It's platonic love. Yes. That's us. So, like, for instance, shout out to the person who I generally give flowers to when I was a less hopeless romantic. Yes. I would usually give them an assortment of... The first one was pink, white, and yellow roses. Yellow means friendship, white means purity. And what does pink mean again? Young love? Yeah, no, it's, it's more like a like a friendly love. Ah, oh, yes. Rather than a lustful love. Ah, oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And usually what I do for any romantic partner, whoever part of the figment of imagination it is. Or ex. Or whatever. Yes. Right? Generally, it's those three in either combination. Ah, oh, yes. And their favourite flower. Nice. What's your favourite flower? I never asked. I don't know. I don't know. I, y- y- you know, you know. This is great. Yes. Yellow roses are great because I know the symbolism behind it. It's Me too. Great. Yeah. Um, and by all means, I will take them gracefully. Um. And my thing is that. Okay, and here's a question to you, Sophie. Yes. What is more important, twelve roses, or one? Actually, the person who's giving it is more important. High five. Well done. I mean... Well done. It really doesn't matter how many roses you give. What matters is the colour and the person. Correct. Well done, Sophie. Yeah. You read right through me. <laughs> so just got a bunch. Just picked one out. Pick, yeah. Yeah. So, yellow. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. And, um... Did they cost six dollars a rose? No. I'm not telling you how much they cost. I know. Okay. 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 Is it less or more? Less. Okay. Cool. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Definitely less. <laughs> so insane that, because we haven't seen each other in two weeks. I know. And my week has been pretty intense, but we won't get into that. No, not yet. Not until the dust settles down. Yeah, and we we can think about it from a other perspective. An objective perspective. Yes. Um, In saying that, the other possible medication, Mm. um, according to these results, will be a anti-smoking drug. So anti-smoking drugs, do they actually make how people not smoke anymore by reducing the dependence on their smoking yes of the, of the drug of the, of the nicotine and that sort of process can make people happier and that could be for you too i suppose yeah because yeah. the uh, it's, it's very similar effects on um I'm, I'm wondering if what i said made sense but yeah, basically it, it, it's, it's, it's basically replacing nicotine with something else that makes you happy yeah and, and also alongside that mm-hmm. um that that thought that you need a cigarette um, really urgently yes is very similar to a person that deals um, before they have an anxiety attack oh wow because when people really want a cigarette they're getting they get really anxious is that right yep. okay yep so that's the sounds like something I'll, I'll need well yeah it, it, it's sort of weird from it's sort of like reflective on me because um, I never smoked as a, I, I've never smoked, ever. Me neither. And yet my parents and my sister do. So I'm like, huh. Should I start vaping now, Sophie? No. <laughs> Your brain's already screwed up as it says. Don't add nicotine to it. Oh, vape nation. No. <laughs> An upside, upside V and a downside V. Yeah. Vape Nation. Yeah. You know to re- to represent V N. Yeah. And so, Dad, how yes. was how was the last two weeks? Oh, it's been a bit boring without you. Oh. Missed you a lot. Oh. Missed my buddy. Yeah. And um, now it's pretentious food corner because we need some chocolate to make us feel better. Yes, and I knew that. Um, I was thinking about bringing some pretentious stuff over. Yes. But because we are on location. Yes. 
I can say that everything in this house is pretentious. Yes. <laughs> so I was because both of us love Whitakers. Um, you love the five rolled milk bar. Yeah. And I prefer the seventy seventy six percent dark Ghana. Yeah. But we have here the Whitakers Waikato grown aromatic oolong tea and dark chocolate. Did you know that Waikato the Waikato region grows tea? Well, we're. I had my grandmother's 80th birthday. Yes. Because her 85th was on Friday. Yes. We had it at the place where they grow oolong tea. Wow. So how was your grandmother's 85th? It was great. How was the speech? Was it a hit? Great. My auntie wanted a copy of it. <laughs> so I'm like, wait, did I delete it straight away or nah? I didn't. So I'm like... Yay! Yeah. So I sent her a PDF. I'm assuming it's going to go for the wider um, newsletter. Yes, for the family. Yeah, for the extended family that didn't show up. Nice. Anyway, Waikato, grown aromatic oolong tea by Zilong Teas in, the, in Waikato. Yes. It's 50% cow-cow, 100 grams net, and it's... Batch No. 4, which means it's number 4 in the collection of artisan chocolates by Whitakers. And you, you know, normal Whitakers chocolate is already pretty pretentious enough, but this is like pretentious of the most pretentious. Now, if you, if you don't know where that particular tea place is in the Waikato, mm -hmm. it is on the road from Hamilton East to Topiti, and just short of Gordington, there's a intersection to go to Morrinsville. Yeah. It's right on that corner. And if you still have no idea what Mike is talking about, I will send a link to website plus a link to Google Maps. Yeah. Anyway, I thought this particular chocolate would be pretentious because it's green tea and chocolate. Never seen this combination before. And furthermore, it's the only combination, pretentious combination without any nuts in it. Um, there is a other combination that you probably haven't thought of. Lava salt, was it? No. No, Which one? Um, but it, it, it is not New Zealand chocolate. Well, it's, what is it? Kit Kat green tea. I've had that once. Yeah, that is the only other example I can think of. It was it was actually surprisingly good, the Kit Kat green tea, but, you know, you can't really buy them here in New Zealand. No. And the only reason why I managed to try some was because one of Mum's patients came back from Japan. And thus brought some souvenirs with her. Fantastic. So, what is? Well, um, chin chin. Whatever that means. Surprisingly good. Wow. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I like this. Mike? I think they got the balance right. The balance between the teeness and the chocolatiness. Yeah. Because, like, because that's, what percentage is that? That's 50, eh? 50, yes. Yeah. So if you, like, if you had it stronger, mm -hmm. you'll be afraid that it, it might have been too bitter. And would take over the tea flavour. Yeah. Yes. Huh. This, this, tastes like, this tastes like sweet chocolatey oolong. Yeah. So like you, because like the chocolate's at the front, yeah. tea's in the back. It's the aftertaste, isn't it? It somehow, yeah. somehow wafts into your nose. Yeah. So it works. This is so good. Do you want another one? Yes, please. There's another two blocks in there. Break one for me, please. Yep. Thank you. Oh my god, this is one of the best. Mm. So, someone has work tomorrow. Maybe I need to get the time sorted. Yeah. Talk about it. We can talk No, just don't bother talking about it. It'll immediately date the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. With that being said, though, I just found something else I liked the other day. What is that, Sophie? Pop Dean Epic. Hmm. <laughs> My goodness. 
it's what they describe as an anti-anime anime. Yes. As, but, as, um, but really, it's just a series of dark comedy skits that makes fun of um, pop culture. Yeah, it's... Um, it's Yeah, it's... Cause, cause so, what they do is that they take established anime characters, mm-hmm. and in this case, it's Sailor Moon, mm. and they make dark comedic skits out of it not as bad as happy tree friends no but uh, uh, you, you know take a couple of notches off well that's the thing right i mean i really enjoy dark comedy but i don't enjoy dark comedy just for the sake of dark comedy yeah i enjoy it if they actually satirize something yes or make fun of it so parodying something and that's where the genius of pop team network lies yeah and um yeah i will be... a dead body hanging from a tree isn't funny no it's not a dead body hanging from a tree to symbolize political discord slash the stupidity of logan paul is yeah have you watched a few skits already they're, they're all skit form by the way so that means you can watch watch part of the episode and just there's no plot to it so yeah so 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 what i've done is that i've watched the ones that Sophie gave me. Yes. One of them was very similar to my life. Which was? Are you upset? <laughs> no, it's me and you. <laughs> so there's this one particular skit in which the short blonde character punches the the tall purple haired character. Punch, punch. Are you upset? No. Mm. Punch, punch. Are you upset? No. Punch, 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 punch. Mm. Are you upset yet? No. <laughs> That's so us. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And uh, but my favourite one has to be the one with the cuckoo clock. Oh yeah, yeah. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, that's super cute. In fact, I was thinking thought it was a super annoying. Yeah. Your life will end in thirty minutes. <laughs> I mean, no, there's, no, seriously, you have to watch the skit itself. It's so hard to explain, but basically, um, it's you have this blonde-haired girl with a hammer. Waiting for the cuckoo clock to come back out so that she could smash the cuckoo. Yes. Your life will end in 30 minutes. Now, we actually have some Yuri on Ice news. Oh, good. Um, it's delayed. Is it? No. It's going to be turned to a film. No. It's. No. Have, you, have, it, have one more guess. It's going to be here next year. Now. No, well, you're wrong. What is, at the, what is on at the moment, Sophie? It's Valentine's Day soon. No, no, no. Well, well, what what started on Saturday? No idea. In Korea. Olympics. The Olympics. The Winter Olympics mm-hmm. at Pyeongchang. And the, uh, the there was a group in the mixed peers competition. Who did the darts routine from Yuri on Ice? They used the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Heard about that. Didn't know much about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I th- that was probably the only Yuri on Ice news that I know at this moment. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but still, Yuri on Ice news. Yeah. <laughs> For the moment, I've only got Pop Team Epic because, well, something else is on high ice. Let's literally put it on the ice. Oh, yes. Yuri on Ice is put on the ice, so therefore, I'm right at this moment, I've got Pop Team Epic. Yeah. So in saying that, um, there, there, there was a sports game on Monday, mm. and a whole bunch of trailers that happened. Go. Um, Civil War. Oh yeah? Which yeah. one? Oh no, um, Avengers um, Infinity War. Oh yeah? Um, and a few others. But the one that always got me the most was the Cloverfield Paradox. Oh yeah? Netflix, isn't it? Yep, because what they they released the trailer during halftime show, mm-hmm. and they said it's coming to Netflix straight after the Super Bowl. We're talking about the Super Bowl here, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as soon as the Super Bowl ended, you can watch the next Cloverfield movie on Netflix. So what was Thirteen Cloverfield Lane about? Is it connected to this? Yes. Everything's all interconnected in some strange way. If it has a Cloverfield name, it's connected. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you have to go so niche 
Mm-hmm. Like, they have custom Twitter names of the protagonists in the film. Wow. That you have to look up to make sure that you've got all of the clothes sorted. Clothes? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, they are making a fourth film. Yeah, not exactly sure what it is. Oh wow! Yeah. So, by the way, what's so special about Super Bowl? How come so many people are so obsessed with it? Now, um, like all sports, like like all patriarchal sports, we'll call it that. Yeah, like rugby here. Yes. Um, all hail Rich McCall. <laughs> They have seen a significant decrease in viewership over the last decade. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Um, other interests, not really bothered about it. Increase correlation between uh, brain damage as well as uh, American football. Yeah. I thought that was a big issue too. Yeah, well, yeah, that, that's always a big issue. Yeah, I'll link you, I'll link you guys to a Freakonomics podcast about that. Um, and... View not like um, viewership went from seventy three percent to fifty two. Oh wow! Over the last decade, and for half of the male population in America, that's a lot of people. Yes. So you you're potentially thinking about forty million people that are not watching the Super Bowl. What are they watching then? What? What are they watching? Who knows? Other things. Social media. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. And like you, you, you know, that, that that's a huge undertaking. Watching the Super Bowl, it's a five-hour show. In which you only get what thirty minutes worth of running. Fifty. Fifty minutes worth of running in a five-hour show. Yeah. You're kidding! It's like they. What? After every play, you take a break. Well, only one sixth of the whole show is actual playing. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yes. No wonder why the viewership is dropping. Yeah. So, you, you, you know, um, f- from n- now going forward, there's a lot of people that are just going to watch the highlights. Yes. And that's pretty... The 50 minutes. Yeah, well, you, you know, with my little thing with wrestling. Yes. I don't even watch the three and the two hour show. You only watch like 30 minutes of it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's something for Super Bowl to think about in the future. Maybe there should be more like rugby. Or, or like have a reduced, yeah, reduced stoppage time. Yes. Yeah. Less breaks, reduced stoppage time. Yeah. And maybe very similar with the rotation basis that um, baseball pitchers usually have. Because they go through about five or six pitches. So the, how does that work? They go on a rotation basis. How does that work? So, like, like, one pitcher would go through about six innings in a ten-inning match. Yes. Shoulders sore, and they'll just rotate them. Oh, yeah, like, you're next, you're next, you're next. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they should so they should have more um, reserve, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I hear um, that I, last week was also the Brisbane Teens. Which is tennis side rugby with 10 minute halves. Tennis side rugby. Tennis side rugby. Oh, tennis side rugby. I Not see. tennis side rugby. Tennis side <laughs> rugby. Tennis side rugby. Yes. I mean, if you want to draw us some fan arts, draw us some tennis side rugby. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Tennis rackets and little rugby balls would be great. I oh, know. Um, so, yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of people in the stands. No. At that event. And uh, it more was... to football. I'm not talking about American football, but the uh, but the proper football football? No, 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 no. Um, no, I'm talking about Brazil here. They, pres- they usually prefer... No, 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 no. Brisbane, not Brazil. Brazil. Not Brisbane. Oh, I see. I thought you said Brazil for a moment. No, no. Sorry. Brisbane. Brisbane. Which is pretty much any sort of mecca of rugby slash rugby league. Yes. It's pretty much... It's we Brisbane. Pretty much Brisbane. And, you know, they didn't have hardly any crowds there. Why is that? I don't know. They were probably doing more important things. Um, didn't probably make it more attractive. Oh, yeah? Um, what, they need more bikinis? I'm not going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I 
They need more bikinis and mankinis. Yeah, because like for for wait, uh, Mike. Yes. If you had a bikini person wearing, oh no! If you had a supermodel woman wearing bikini as well as a a man as well as a man wearing a mankini. Yes. Would the net crowd be bigger or smaller? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Because that's the thing, though, right? So even having a super hot man wearing a mankini is like uh. People usually turn off by that also, I've heard. I'm yeah, not too but, sure, though. Yeah, but, is, but isn't it the plot to um, Fifty Shades of Grey? What? Man wearing, <laughs> wearing a mankini? Yeah. Just standing up together? Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I'm not even too sure. It's a uh, fan fiction of Twilight, so it never makes sense. Yeah, it never makes sense. But anyway. Yeah, something to think, think about in the future. Maybe you should have more scantily clad... Should we have more scantily clad women or men in a rugby match to get more men in? It's always going to be women. Okay. Um, the, the, um, like for instance, a relation of mine. Yeah. Was very disheartened about F one's decision to take the grid girls away. Oh, I've heard about that. Yes. Yes. But the grid girls, they. I think they should be paid as much as crash. T- they should be paid as much as the drivers and the pit stop crew because they literally are still putting their life in danger. Yes, yes, that's very true. And I think if one has not made a well, uh, they, they were put into a corner. Yes. Will it be financially more financially viable to have if one? Yeah. Of course it will, it will be. The power of boobs. No, 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 no. I mean, like, you know, you're not paying the grid girls anymore. If you're not paying the grid girls anymore, yeah. then that could make them more viable. You're, yeah, So because you, you're not paying grid girls. Well, that's still the power of boobs. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I mean, seriously, how come men are so attracted to bags of fat? I don't know. I don't know, because it's spongy and we can't touch them without people getting disgusted. Oh my goodness, I have an idea. Instead of pit girls, why don't we re- why don't we actually have like str- like um scarecrows with um, bags of fat on them? The best came from thing there that makes a pit girl a pit girl, right? Nice jangly breasts as well as revealing clothing. <laughs> All we need is straw. Pe- what we need is scarecrows with bags of fat on the chest area. <laughs> I would like to see that Wizard of Oz movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the scarecrow was a woman? Yep. Yeah. Furthermore, it, furthermore, it's like, it goes down to the very, very essence of it. Yes. And with that said, have we gone down to the very essence of our podcast? Maybe. I felt as if we had your friend our things to talk to for the moment. <laughs> We may as well end it here. Yep. And, okay. Fan art challenge for this week. Tennis side rugby. Tennis side rugby. As well as scarecrows with boobs. Yes. You you, you can message us at as, as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com. Send us the fan art over there or tweet us at AYU podcast at AYU podcast. And if you so wish to contact Mike and me, you are on the minus T H E M A R N U S, and she is Sophie nine seven zero nine. And that said, bags of fat. <laughs>